Hello and welcome to Feast of Pilosus, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. In this exciting episode, we're heading out into the field to collect fossil mammals. So the first thing you want to do before you head out and find uh, fossils is you want to kind of scout out and figure out uh, what places are the best places to look for fossils. So since we're interested in collecting fossil mammals, we're going to consult geological maps to determine uh, rock units that are of the right age. And now those geological maps will give us a uh, description of the rocks that we'll find. And they'll tell us a little bit um, of some clues about the environment that those rocks formed in. Whether it was deep ocean rocks, uh, whether it was formed from coral reefs, or whether, in the case of mammals that we're interested in, terrestrial mammals, whether they were found in uh, rivers and ponds and streams, uh, those types of depositional environments. Once you kind of figured out a good area to, to scout out and check out, you want to also figure out who owns the land. So fossils that are found in the United States uh, belong to the landowner that owns the surface rights to the land. So if you are heading out, you want to definitely get permission before you head out on any private land from the landowner. Today we're actually going to be looking for fossils on federal land that's managed by the Bureau of Land Management. And to do that, I have a special paleontology permit that allows me to collect the fossils. Now the fossils, however, stay within the ownership of the federal government. And that means that I have to have a repository agreement with a, a federally um, approved museum in which the fossils will be deposited in. So the museum that all the my fossils will be deposited in is the Field House Museum in Vernal, Utah. And uh, so they'll stay locally within the community. So if you ever want to come and take a look at the fossils that we find, you can come to the museum and take a look at them in their collections. So this is kind of a neat way of keeping all the fossils that we find um, within the public ownership and so they're still owned by all the citizens of the country. So before you head out, make sure you have permission and have the permits, um, have the uh, museums that's gonna accept your fossils all lined up. If it sounds like a lot of work, the best way to do it is to contact a local natural history museum and find out what sorts of uh, field work they're doing and volunteer to go out and collect fossils with them. So here we are, we're heading out into the boonies to scout out some really good fossil mammals today from the Eocene epoch, uh, which is a period of time that I'm very fascinated with, and uh, we'll see what we can find today. So here we are out in the desert and we've arrived at our destination. Now one of the reasons that deserts make such great places to find fossils is that uh, there's not much plant life. And so that gives us a lot of uh, rocks that we can look at that are well exposed. But you can find fossils anywhere. You can find them in cities, you can find them in tropical rainforests. But the fact that deserts are such great places to look for fossils is because you can see the rocks much better than a tropical rainforest or a city. My hand. More bones. This is a neat bone. This is a, looks like it's a juvenile um, mammal. And this is probably the distal end of the tibia that we're seeing here. Um, so the apophysy that would be at the end here is missing. That's usually indicating a juvenile. So one of the first things you want to do uh, when you discover a fossil site is to record the precise location of where the fossil is found. This is using a tremble, but you can also use a uh, GPS unit. 
and record that information and put that into an, into a notebook and uh, write up all your notes um, about what you have found in the field. Um, take lots of photographs. They'll be useful in the field. You also want to describe the rocks that you find in it, the color, um, and uh, write up your notes. And uh, that way you have information when you get back to the lab to reconstruct it. One of the most valuable tools you have as a paleontologist is toilet paper because you can wrap up fossils in toilet paper and uh, it's, it's a, good, a good tool. So we're going to wrap up what we found on the surface and uh, in toilet paper to make sure it's safe to transport it back to the lab. Very carefully picked up um, the remains that we have on the surface and now we're going to work on the fossils that are still in the rock. Um, so the first thing we want to do uh, with our fossil is we're going to apply some glue to try to kind of uh, keep it together and then we're going to work around the fossil and try to excavate as much as we can and see what we can do. Found some some more stuff in the uh, subsurface here, which is good because that'll be nicely preserved. And so finding something here is very exciting. So we're going to move nice and slow now and uh, try to see what this is here. Got some bones sticking out of the ground here. It's my happy face because I just found a very cool skull. Um, I found a, a skull. This is the top of the brain case here. You can see the lower jaw here and teeth coming out. It's kind of mangled up. A um, bit of the upper part here. And one of the coolest fossils you can find as a mammalian paleontologist. It's a stragulus bone belonging to an artiodactyl. You can tell it's an artiodactyl, a even-toed ungulate like a deer or a pig, uh, because it has those two grooves on either side. It's called dull, double poly astragalus, and just found this here, and very cool little fossil. So here we have a rib right there we're working on, and we got some toe bones over here, another rib over here. So let's see if we can, we can clear this out. Here's another really cool skull that we just found. Uh, digging in. So here we have the cervical vertebra coming up. Here's the lower jaw. You can see the teeth. And the upper jaw. Uh, here's the nose. The nose would be over here. And the back of the skull is back here with the vertebral column extending down back here. So very cool. This is probably a little artiodactyl that we discovered. Um, lots of skeletal bones around it, but we have the skull, which is really cool. Very exciting.
All right, so we spent the last uh, three hours here um, pedestaling out the skull that we have, and we're gonna jacket this with a plaster jacket. So we have our skull here. Here's the lower jaw, the upper jaw, some cervical vertebrae. And the first step is we're gonna take some toilet paper and just cover it. This will be protective layer here. Like so. And then covering this we found some more bone over here, so we're gonna put some toilet paper there. And that way it's covered. Then I got some an industrial paper towel. Help kind of cover this up. Soak them in some plaster of Paris. Yeah, so we're out here jacketing. We've been out here for several hours, and let me show you what we got so far. So here is our jacket, and uh, you can see we've been pedal pulling it out and trying to get underneath here to get our plaster around here. So uh, we're gonna flip it pretty soon and plaster on the uh, the reverse side. So uh, been a lot of work. Been a long day so far. So. Hopefully we'll flip it and we'll have the full, the full fossil inside our inside our jacket here. So let's see if we can do it. So it's it's almost seven o'clock at night, and we've been working all day, and uh, we're sitting here uh, waiting for the plaster to dry. Got paleontology hands and plaster and uh, we'll see what we can do. We're gonna flip this thing over and that'll be the moment of truth to see if it all stays within the jacket. All right, I think we're about ready to flip it. The success, we've flipped our jacket over. Woohoo! And there's no fossils. So the fossils are in our jacket. Woohoo! Success! I some now we'll cover this part up with the plaster and then we have to get it down down the steep hill. Let's do it. Alright, we have the top on. Woohoo! Okay. Now we have to get down the hill. So now is the hardest part about being a paleontologist. Getting your heavy fossil down to the vehicle. So, uh, let's see if we can do it. Feeling strong. Strong! Let's do it. We have the jacket and the vehicle. 
right here, right here. All 200 pounds of it. We did it. Now, to take it back to the lab. But first, I think we're gonna go have a well-deserved beer as soon as I catch my breath. But we did it. We did it. Whew. So, what a successful day we had collecting fossils. Now we're going to take them back to the lab and prepare them for the museum and uh, see what we found today. What an exciting day. We found a couple of skulls. We found some cool mammals. So let's see what we found. So this is what happens when you do paleontology field work. You rip uh, holes in your pants. <laughs> <laughs>